So example one, identifiable intangible with finite useful life. Company A has a patent with book value of 7,500. 7, the patent is estimated to bring 2,000 each year in the next four years using a discount rate of 4%. The fair value of the patent is 7,260. Is there impairment for the patent? And if so, how much? So uh, please take five minutes, try to work on this example and you can pause your video for now. So let's look at uh, step one, undiscounted. So we compare the undiscounted future cash flow with the book value of the patent. The book value is 7,500. The undiscounted future cash flow is 2,000 each year for four years. So that's 8,000. So the undiscounted future cash flow is bigger than its book value. So even though the fair value is smaller than the book value, but because it is identifiable, intangible with finite useful life, we don't need to worry about the fair value in the first step. As long as the undiscounted future cash flow is bigger, it's okay for us. We don't need to do impairment. So uh, the answer is no. No impairment is needed. Uh, that is example one. Example two is also identifiable asset with finite useful life. Company A has a patent with book value of 10,000. The patent is, is estimated to bring 2,000 each year in the next four years using discount rate of 4%, fair value 7,260. Um, is there an impairment for the patent? If so, how much? Please take five minutes, try to work on this example and you can pause your video for now. So let's say step one, the undiscounted future cash flow is 8,000 and the book value now is 10,000. So it's bigger than the undiscounted future cash flow. So yes, we need to move to the second step. So this pattern needs impairment. And how much impairment should we recognize? So for the impairment loss, we compare the fair value of the pattern, which is 7,260 with its book value. So we need to uh, mark down the pattern to its fair value. And then the difference is 2,740. So, um, that, our, that is our impairment loss. And the general entry is to debit loss on impairment. Two thousand seven hundred forty and credit patents. Example three: identifiable asset with indefinite use for life. So firm A has a trademark with book value of ten thousand. The trademark is estimated to bring two hundred each year indefinitely in the future. The discount rate is four percent. The fair value of the trademark is 5,000. Is there impairment for the trademark? If so, how much? Please take five minutes, try to work on this on your own and you can post your video for now. So the first step here, uh, this trademark, it can bring 200 each year indefinitely into the future. So we don't know how many years uh, so that's why uh, we cannot use undiscounted future cash flow here. It can be indefinite, the undiscounted future, some of the undiscounted future cash flow. So here in the first step, instead of, instead of using the undiscounted future cash flow, we just use the fair value directly, directly. So we compare the fair value of the patent with its book value. The fair value is 5,000 book value 10,000, which is bigger than the fair value. So yes, we need to move to step two, which is we need to calculate impairment. And in step two, the impairment loss, that's the difference between fair value and the book value. So we just mark down the book value to its fair value. 
So uh, the impairment loss is 5,000. The general entry is debit loss on impairment for 5,000 credit trademark. Oh, sorry. Trademark for 5,000. So uh, that is for identifiable assets with indefinite use for life. Example four, goodwill. So if company A has a reporting unit with goodwill recorded as an asset, the fair value of the reporting unit is 3.4 billion. Book value of the reporting unit is 3.8 billion. Fair value of reporting units identifiable net asset, that's 3.185 billion. Book value of the goodwill is 235,000. Uh, is there an impairment and if so, how much? Please take five minutes, try to work on this on your own. You can pause your video for now. So in the goodwill situation, in the first step, um, because we cannot calculate the fair value of the goodwill directly because we don't really know what it is. Uh, it can be a lot of different things. So in the first step, we compare the fair value of the reporting unit with the book value of the reporting unit. And the fair value of the reporting unit is 3.4 billion. The book value of the reporting unit is 3.8 billion. So the book value is bigger than the fair value. Yes, we need to move to the second step. So this uh, goodwill needs, it needs an impairment. And then in the second step, uh, the impairment loss, that's the difference between the implied fair value of the goodwill and the book value of the goodwill. So what is, how much is the implied fair value of goodwill? That is the difference, that is a residual value. So that is the difference between the fair value of the reporting unit, which is, 3.4 billion, or oh, sorry, uh, 3.4 million. So that is in millions. Uh, and the book value is 3.8 million. And the fair value of reporting units identifiable net assets 3.185 million. So that is in million. Uh, and then we take out all of the, the fair value of all of its identifiable asset and liabilities, 3.185 million. So that gives us 215,000. And then, so this is the implied fair value of the goodwill. And then we compare it with the book value. So minus the book value of the goodwill is, which is 235,000. So the difference is 20,000. So that is the impairment loss. And the general entry is to debit loss on impairment for 20,000 and credit goodwill for 20,000.